Hey y'all, this is A.O. Thick Madame. I'm not sure if this is going to be my last video for the day or not, but I have a lot of uh, free time, meaning I have been able to make time to do these reviews and uh, this actual thoughts video right now. So I'm um, trying to do that before I call home and talk to my mama and them and I want to get some gaming in too. But yeah, anyway... So, I'm going to get the heavy stuff out of the way first because I don't want to be in my feelings and get my energy drained all over again because it's been drained all week outside of work because of this. So, i um, pretty sure I'm going to put it in the title and it's about LaShawn Daniels. Um, as most, if not all of us, have already heard that earlier in the week on the 3rd, I think, he passed away from a head-on car collision he was driving in South Carolina somewhere and somebody's truck crossed over and hit him head on he died and the person who was driving that other truck died so yeah um unless the story changed that's what I heard happened but yeah I actually saw the aerial footage the other day and it just made my heart sink like sink again like my first time ever even hearing about him was before uh, this news broke. A lot of people were like, who is that? Who is that? And then had to actually Google him. But I'd heard about him, like many of us have heard about him, by seeing him when him and his wife appeared on Tamar and Vince when that show was around. They, at the time, were supposed to be like the really close friends to Tamar and Vince. And... Um, when I saw the show and I saw them on it, I was just like, wow. Like, he seemed very, 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 very hilarious, down to earth, very much so in tune with his spirituality. And, you know, he had no problem with being like, oh, no, I ain't got time for this. This ain't a book. This just don't seem like it's a book of God. Like, no, I ain't got time for that. Like, he always seemed like he was really deep into religion. And... A lot of people were like shocked that he was the person behind all of these major hits and he had all these Grammys, like he had so much going on for himself. And you know, right now, if you still don't know who I'm talking about, if you have heard the song that Erica Campbell did where she had like a trap feel to it where she was like, I love God, you don't love God? What's wrong with you? So the guy who kept saying, I love him, 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 that was him. He just randomly did that part. And he like could sing a little bit too. And he was hilarious. Like he seemed so cool and down to earth. Like if I were to walk up to him, he wouldn't feel like he was better than me. And he would actually speak to me, you know, and act like a normal person. So yeah, y'all, um, I haven't really watched anybody's videos or seen many articles where anybody addressed this. So if they have, um, just disregard it. But I'm just curious as to, you know, what really happened. Because I asked this when it first happened. So I think, like, this was the first season of Tamar and Vince. They were on there. And then, like, the second season or whenever it happened, all of a sudden, Tamar and Vince would get on there interchangeably. And they would say... Well, you think you have friends until you find out you don't and people are using you for clout or seem like they were trying to make it seem like LaShawn and April were using them. And I'm like, huh? When I first found out about who he was and I saw all the stuff that they actually displayed on the show, that made me look deeper into who he was. Now, when that show came on, that was years ago, like years before now. So I've known of this man's existence for quite some time now. So I'm confused as to why anybody was trying to make it seem like they were, he was using them for anything when he had, he has been sitting up here writing music for people. He has been over here, like, this man has been doing the absolute most. So I'm trying to understand why they weren't friends anymore. Was it actually the other way around? Because, granted, uh, Vince had a lot of stuff going on for himself, but LaShawn had already been out there 
proved himself years and years and years ago. I don't know how long Vince had been in the game and had done anything, but I'm, I honestly like if if there's any information out there about that, if it's already been said and I missed it, somebody let me know that in the comment section what that was about. But I was hoping that nobody would be fake. I feel like you need to keep the same energy you had when I was alive now that I'm deceased, if that's what the case was. Because if you feel like I wasn't your friend and I'm using you, don't sit up here and try to be like, oh, that was my boy back in the day. And we was, I was, I was going, I was about to go on ahead and try to squash things because it was stupid or whatever. Like, I'm really hoping that that hasn't been the situation because I've been so tempted to go to Tamar's um, page and to go to Vince's page to see if they've said anything outside of rest in peace, if that. Because I wouldn't want nobody to be fake when it came to me. Now, anyway, in all seriousness, rest in peace, LaShawn Daniels. His wife, who is very much so gorgeous. I just, was, when I saw her, I was just like, wow, she is gorgeous. And at times when everything went down between them, whatever it was, I'm I'm questioning like did she feel slighted in some way because April is gorgeous like a natural beauty I don't if she's done any work I can't tell as far as you know work to her body like is that what that is because she's a natural beauty and she's been doing all this other extra stuff and you know I'm I'm just I'm just throwing out stuff I don't know if that's what it is but anyway let's move forward with the thoughts video so now I'm on to the reality TV shows that I do not review, but I do watch. But I want to discuss a few things about them. So the first thing up on the list is Black Ink Crew Compton. <sighs> Lemire, you and your girlfriend need to get back to life and reality. I don't understand why your girlfriend is under the impression that y'all just have all this money. Despite the fact that y'all are on this show, I'm pretty sure the person who's getting the most amount of money for showing their face is KP because he is the one over the shop. He hadn't even been at the shop. He hadn't told anybody, to my knowledge, what's going on with his girlfriend, which would be understandable. And then they would be able to divide his actual clients up amongst everybody, if that's the case. But this last episode, he had the nerve to finally pop up the second day, because he didn't come the first day. He didn't come on the opening day. And I don't know if KP had to text him first or what, but he finally was able to get in contact with him. And he said he wasn't going to be here. And it's like, this is the first day. And they're flooded and they're shorthanded. And so Voodoo Doll, uh, Voodoo Doll who is... Um, it's supposed to be a princessing. She had to step in and be a like whole artist out here. Like somebody who's like out there. You got to hope that she ain't going to mess nobody up. And I'm just like, oh. Like, it's just too much. And you ain't doing nothing. It ain't like he was at an emergency C-section or emergency something was going on with his girlfriend. They was out looking at trucks for their business and I understand you have a shaved ice business but don't sit up here and make these obligations that actually would be putting food on your table possibly more than what shaved ice does like you know I don't know how much they charge and I bet they are out in LA but at the same time just saying I've seen what people pay for tattoos now if you are amazing like you claim to be and everybody else claim you to claim for you to be that means you will be bringing in amazing amounts of money with all of these people who you had booked to do tattoos for. Why aren't you showing up? You need to tell her, um, yeah, I got to go do this over here because you weren't out on the truck working. You were going out looking at trucks. So there was no money coming in. So I don't understand why you weren't at actual work. That makes no sense. Don't care if she's pregnant. It doesn't matter. Don't sit up here and try to use that as your position on everything. I'm pregnant, so just do what I tell you to do. Like, no. Like, no, that's not what we're going to do. Um, <clears throat> I 
despite what went down between Lemire and what's his name, Tim, Timothy, or whatever, this man is supposed to be his like manager or something like that. Lemire is dead on because ever since the first episode, I've been looking like, okay, if you ain't tattooing, why are you here, sir? You ain't you ain't booking nothing for him. Every time I look at you, you are his shadow. You ain't his bodyguard. I don't understand why you're here. It's like you wake up and you find out where he's going to be and you make sure that you're there. Like, shouldn't you be out finding other gigs for him? Shouldn't you be advertising? Shouldn't you be, since you're trying to make it seem like you're a jack of all trades because he does several things, you're everywhere with him. This man at the gym, there you go. Like, why? Why? He's basically pay, paying you around the clock to do nothing. I don't understand. So, in that regard, I'm here with Lemire on that. But otherwise, mm -mm. you ain't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. So, I'm not understanding why you are allowing your very pregnant girlfriend to sit up here and dictate what you need to be doing and where you need to be when you have a mouth to feed. Hopefully if everything pans out with this baby. Moving right along with that, um, I'm still not here for Voodoo Doll talking about her dad, stepfather being this cult leader. Every single time we see her, I understand you have gone all the way through. So what is going on as far as I'm concerned is it seems as though you need to go get counseling. Like at this point, go get counseling, please. Because every time you bring it up, you tell somebody, you tell somebody, I'm like, girl, at this point, gather everybody around and be like, just in case I didn't tell y'all, this is what the situation is with my family. So every single person you go to, they're finding out for the first time. And we got to hear this every single time you come on the screen. I want to see your artwork. You know what I'm saying? That is something that has been lost with a lot of these Black Ink Crew shows. These people ain't doing no artwork no more. They look like trash. A lot of these people... Look like amateurs, and I'm just like, why? So, only thing positive that I can say about Voodoo Doll that I noticed this episode really is two things. First of all, she needs to wear her hair in its natural state at all times because it looks really, really nice. Because I was like, yes, why you wear that ugly wig all the time? And I lived for the shoes that she had on. Y'all do not understand. I, as soon as I saw those shoes, I screamed because I have had those shoes on wish list on various sites for years. Those shoes can be very expensive. In recent years, they have kind of dropped the price on some of them, but they have a whole lot to choose from. And the ones that I want are still between 150 and two something. They are waterproof. You're supposed to be able to wear them in the winter time and not really deal with the snow, all that stuff, like so many different designs, but the ones that I want, all of the different ones that I want, like I said, they are all between 150 and two something. And I'm not in a position to pay for those and I don't need them like that. So like if I ever make it again in my life, I will be getting some, but yeah. You have great taste as far as those shoes are concerned. Those are amazing shoes. They are everything. They are wedge boots, leather, amazing. I love them. Um, I digress. I'm sorry. I had I had to set it off for the shoes <laughs> because I'm not I'm not a sneakerhead, but I live for nice shoes. Um, I found it kind of not really cringe worthy but it was kind of crazy how columbus short came in to get a tattoo the first day that the shop opened but then he just came straight in it was like somebody here just got blown up down the street and i'm like what first of all what is going on here like i wouldn't even came in the building like you just I, at first when it happened i was like okay this whole time every time they show us this scene this had to have been setting up for him trying to do some kind of an acting scene. That's what I'm thinking the whole time. But apparently somebody's head did get blown. Somebody's cap got 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 blown back and all this down the street, and, you know, next door or whatever. And I'm like, okay, we never even saw him get a tattoo. So you done came in the, in the, in the place. You done told us all this happened. Did you ever get a tattoo? Like, what is... I'm... Y'all... Too much was going on and, and too much and nothing at the same time was going on. I was tired and 
I always get mixed emotions whenever I see Columbus Shore anyway because he's an amazing actor. But after the things that went down with him, I always look at him sideways and I just be like, no, sir. Um, that's about all I want to talk about about them. So now moving on to Black Ink Crew, you know, the original one that was in New York. Y'all, I understand that Donna is ditzy or whatever. But why did she not know as a fully grown woman that she is supposed to pay her taxes? Why does she think she was supposed to pay taxes once every four years? Why? Why? Even her twin sister was looking at her like, what? So she supposedly is like facing a whole lot of money and she was like, well, if I ain't got it, what am I supposed to do? They're going to garnish the wages and you're probably going to go to jail. Like, unless this is just a random storyline they made up or whatever. But in, in all honesty, it made me think and I was like, well, maybe that's why everything is in the news about Alex suing Teddy and Caesar for like a million dollars or something like that now. Because I'm like, why you bring her back to the shop? I've seen him in Instagram photos as like a part of the company. Like, I'm like, okay, so what is we doing? Like, is this for a storyline? And then like, what is it? Like, what is really going on? Y'all getting on my nerves, y'all. And then the situation with Bay leaving the, um, what's supposed to be a um, team building exercise. I'm sorry, that has to been that had to have been a setup. Ain't nobody doing that. You ain't finna sit up here and climb into somebody's random window and not get shot stabbed, the window locked on you. She just went up in there, was yelling at the people, and they was telling her, It's my house, get out, and all this other stuff. No, I don't care if you're trying to get to your child, you will get shot first, and questions will be asked later where I'm from. You don't don't nobody play that. And I'm confused as to why they window was open anyway. Like, is that just the type of building with a window just raggedy anyway? So she climbed up the fire escape or whatever that was and was going to be able to get in anyway. But I understand people do all kinds of things to get to their kids, but that was ridiculous. And as I mentioned before, why is Bay on this show if she works at another shop? I don't remember if it was her shop or if it was at another shop, but like, is she just making an appearance on here? To have this crazy storyline with Rob and this baby and whatever to get another check. And she working somewhere else because every time we see her, she ain't tattooing nobody. So I'm like, why are you here? All these people on here sitting in the shop, drinking Hennessy, sleep and doing nothing all day. Why y'all here? And then y'all keep hiring people. Ain't nobody working. I don't understand why none of y'all are here. I don't get it. Y'all be getting on my nerves. So, I mean... <sighs> Puma must have forgot where he worked because it didn't work. And I'm just like, and I have been so tempted to go and find Caesar's ex's um, Instagram if she has one to see what she looks like beforehand because everything else always comes out. I always see pictures of everybody. I always see the drama unfold before it airs on stuff now. Like, People used to be bound by contracts that they couldn't, you know, reveal that they were pregnant or reveal that they were getting engaged or whatever drama was going on. They weren't at liberty to discuss these things. But now everything is literally out there just like that fizz and April crap. And I'm just like, stop it. I'm tired. But that's about all I had to say on that one. Um, Basketball wives. Um, what LA uh, or whatever it is, y'all. I'm I'm tired. Um, before I forget, because I didn't put it in my little notes, because I made just a few notes. OG's toe is hanging out of her shoe again, and it's like, girl, like isn't that same shoe she had on? Why? Why? Why is your whole like her whole big toe is hanging out of her shoe? I don't understand. The shoe was like too big or something. Like, I don't understand. Like, did they not have your size? And then for some reason, you were just like, I really want this shoe. I got to have this shoe. It got a red bottom. I got to get this shoe. <sighs> so you bought it and your whole toe is hanging out. Like, ain't that uncomfortable? Like, girl, no. She trying to be a coach because she's retiring from football. And I ain't going to lie. I got to give her her props. She did, you know, fine when she did her interview and all that stuff but you know she does have a little work to do but 
the girls were receptive. Those women were receptive to what she was saying. They were able to correct things that needed to be corrected. They were able to execute plays by just different commands that were given, all that. So as far as that's concerned, she cool. But them, that toe, that toe, and then her, oh, I almost forgot. Her wearing lipstick that like uh, washes her skin out. They used to do that when I was in middle school and high school. Like that was a fast leaving trend. I don't understand why she's doing that. I, is that something they're supposed to be bringing back? Because I remember that because I jumped on board very late when it came to that. Because at first I was just, I don't wear makeup as y'all see, but what I would do was I was so into that that I was like, oh my gosh, I got to find one that, fit, that fits my color, that fits the, my um, skin tone. I finally did, and I got on board right when it was about to leave. And I wore it for a little while. I thought it was cute then, but now it just look a mess. <laughs> so I try to just do what I can with stuff that'll pop with my skin tone. There are times I be looking like somewhat of a clown because the reds be too bright. But like it's like, y'all... I'm trying to get y'all to understand that for some reason my lighting or something on the phone or whatever device I'm recording from, it will make it seem like ridiculously bright. But in person, it looks just fine. Like it doesn't look crazy on me. But anyway, off of I, um, OG. I don't care about that no more. So, <clears throat> um, Kristen, I'm just like, so y'all whole storyline... It's going to be you over here begging and pleading for his daddy or whatever he's supposed to be in real life. This man who supposedly raised him, Byron, to be in your grandchild's life. I mean, his grandchild's life. And I'm like, okay, why every time we see you, that's what you have to harp on. And he's kind of letting you know, I ain't got time. I don't want to really fool with you like that because you didn't invite my soon-to-be wife. So he's been kind of flaking on her. He's supposed to be meeting up and all that. He's already squashed everything with his son, but he ain't been here for her because she was basically talking behind his back. And it, in my mind, this whole time, ever since this stuff went down, I'm just like, how is somebody talking behind your back when they're telling the truth? And they're expressing their frustration because you aren't around, you don't call, you don't come around, like you live up the street, around the corner or whatever, like you live in close proximity. So why is it that you haven't been around? Like you are that far up your fiance's behind that you can't come around and spend an hour or however long with your grandchild no more. Apparently something is going on and wrong with Cece because though none of his kids want nothing to do with her. Now... He is of that age. I don't remember how long him and the mama ain't been together, but they are of age. And I'm just like, okay, what's really going on? Because don't none of, ain't none of the kids here for it. And I feel like it's not a situation where it's like, no, we want only my mama and daddy to be together. I don't think it's nothing like that. So I just wish that Kristen would get off of this subject of just being like, oh, I just want him to sit down with me and all, like, she really, I'm just like, girl, move on. Lord. And her and Chris, her and um, Cece still ain't on decent terms. And I'm just like, ugh, when it comes to that, I just feel like she's trying too hard. I'm just like, why? And then Malaysia, it's like she seems to want to insert herself. I understand you, you want to be family oriented and all that stuff, but girl, like, I just wish she would stay out of that. I feel like it ain't that deep for her to just be like, oh no, I want y'all, I want to facilitate this. I want everybody to be on the same page. Oh, okay, like, ugh. um, my thing is this. I feel as though Cece is there for her husband-to-be's notoriety, everything that comes with being the, his wife. Because he already trying to run her and they ain't even married. He was like, yep, you ain't going here. I don't want you to go there. You ain't going. And all this other stuff. He's, he's an older guy. He is from the old school. And you can tell. And she basically is here for whatever he got to do. Yes, yeah, she has a job. But I think that despite him being retired, he, he probably got more money. He pulling in more money than her. And he still has other like ventures, business ventures and other stuff that he has his hand in. So he has way more money than her. So I feel like she there for a check. 
just like all the rest of them was there for their basketball husbands and whoever else and whatever leagues for their money too. Some of the, some of them, I don't say everybody, but you can tell the ones who are there for that. So yeah. Um, I don't understand why Phoebe is on this show. I just don't. All she knows how to do is to try to read somebody about how old they are. And I'm like, girl, that's literally the only thing you can say is, oh, you old. Okay, why don't you hope to live to see my age? Like, girl, go somewhere and sit down. Then you mad because people can actually rap and you can't and she ain't even trying like that. Like, that's how that's how sad all this is. You, it's, I feel like you're hating. You're hating because you ain't there and you ain't gonna be there and don't nobody care nothing about what you got going on. But the only thing you know how to do is try to comfort somebody's age. Like, stop. Um, <clears throat> tired of Jackie. Jackie stay lying. She ain't nobody's friend. I don't understand why her old behind. You know, look at me trying to be like Phoebe. I don't know. I'm I'm just saying. For some reason, on every single one of these shows, they always had this random old woman, somebody who was the old way, like old enough to be just about everybody's mom on here. It's like, why are they on here? Like, why? That's crazy. Like, I don't get it. But she's just on here. It's like, are you that bored? That you are on this show. Like, why are you here? But, like I said, Jackie, she, she just stay lying. And I'm just like, you ain't got nothing better to do. Like, now she want to be a thug and want to try to act like she going to run up on somebody. Run up, get done up. And, girl, stop. <sighs> I cannot. So, I am caught up except for the last episode of Snowfall because I've been watching other stuff. Y'all, I've been watching so many shows. And that's how I am anyway. But, y'all, I'm tired. Too much has happened. If you haven't seen it, you might want to click off now. But, yeah. Oh, I wasn't... I didn't think that he was going to kill the father. He killed him some terrible and I think I mentioned this to y'all before I went to school with Marcus Henderson he was actually in this organization that I was in and he was a theater major but when we were all around him in the organization that we were in he was always laughing and joking he was like the jokester so I never really took him seriously as far as like what his craft was gonna be um, at that time because like I said every time I saw him he was always joking and I ain't gonna sit up here and lie. Yeah, I went to Alabama State University. It was known as a party school, but some of us were into work. Others of us were into partying. That was the aspect that a lot of people focused on. So I didn't know which way he was gonna go, but he excelled under the leadership of Tania Stewart, which y'all know, um, Tommy Stewart, um, y'all know her. Um, she used to do movies and all the other stuff. So, yeah. Um, she's won some stuff too, but she was over the uh, theater department. And, yeah. I, I didn't expect him to get killed. I was just like, like... I really did not expect that. I thought that um, Franklin was going to restrain himself, but I ain't gonna lie, oh boy, he would get buck with him and say stuff. Then, Lord, y'all, the daughter that got hooked on crack rocks. I was just like, girl, we out here smoking rocks? We're really out here smoking rocks. This is what we doing. So after he got killed, the girl who, you know, seems to be like her real, her only real friend, her and her mama took her in. That ain't work out. Her mama got tired because she came in the room one day trying to get her to come out and eat. She ended up smoking crack. She was like, what we not finna do is that in this house. <laughs> because people who get around that stuff, it ends up tainting everybody who is near it. That's not going to be in my house. Like, she went off like, y'all, I'm tired. I don't know. I, ugh. I saw a random article. You know how, like, sometimes you have a front page or something? Because um, I do, I think I have Yahoo front page or Google or something. And it shows, like, different articles. One of the articles that popped up that I didn't click on, but it says something about how um, the creators or whatever of Snowfall, they, they put their foot on the gas and they won't let up. Like, 
stuff has been popping off and I have been like, wait a minute. Like, I need to take a breath. Like, the absolute most has happened. So, if all oh, that just happened, I'm almost scared to see what's going to happen on the next episode. But I am going to get off of here and watch it and see what's going on with it. But anyway, y'all, um, the last thing I'm going to talk about is going to be brief because I'm like three episodes. Um, I have three, three episodes left to watch. I kept seeing this um, poster, I guess you could say, for it. But I had no idea that it was going to be good. It's a prime, Amazon Prime exclusive show called The Boys. And it's like a somewhat bad version of um, Wonder Woman, Superman, The Flash, Aquaman, and... Uh, somebody has some kind of invisibility thing. Um, like, people like that. They have a black one. His name is Black Noir. Like, y'all. Oh, my gosh. If you ever saw Banshee, the guy who's playing, like, the, the Captain America ripoff. Um, Anthony something. Or something, Anthony. He's playing it. Uh, he's playing him. Um, his name is Homelander. Um... <laughs> Oh my gosh, y'all. Um, if you've ever seen... Is it Ballers? Not Ballers. It's this other show that comes on. Uh, this guy, he is from Boston. Black guy from, from Boston. He likes giving back. His whole family lives in the house with him. Mike Epps was in it, but he got himself killed off. Because he thought his show was going to take off, but it didn't. Y'all don't know why I can't think of the name of that show, but it's not Ball. It's just this other show that I watch. But uh, he's a basketball player on there. But on this one, he kind of plays the same way, has the same per Oh, he was the, the young black guy who played Shaft, the newest Shaft, the youngest Shaft on the Shaft movie. I don't know why I couldn't think of what the name of the TV show was, but that was the first time I really saw him before. But yeah, doggone, I'm glad I thought about that. But that's who he is. Yeah. So he plays... Like the black version of Flash, I guess they have other you you know they have other people who run and all that stuff, but that's the first one that comes to mind. Um, there are quite a few people who pop up in this show, and I'm like, what in the world are you doing here? Oh, uh, uh, I want to say his name right. Ah, uh, Las Alphonse. Uh. Les Alphonse, I always say his name wrong, but he's like Cuban, but he always, he seems like he's black, but I think he's Cuban or something like that. Oh my gosh. But yeah, he in there, like it's a lot of people in this show, but it's a good show. I got a couple of more episodes to go. The newest season is going to be released soon. So we're going to see how that go. I actually have been watching a lot of anime too. Well, not a lot. I've been watching the JoJo um, Bizarre series. <sighs> Whew, when I tell you I get invested, it don't even make no sense how I get invested. But anyway, y'all, I digress. Let me get off of here. Hopefully, y'all liked this video. I don't know. I might do one later on because I think Marriage and Medicine is supposed to be coming back. And uh, Potomac is going to be on... And I think that's all I'm going to watch tonight. But anyway, y'all have a good one. I'm about to call home and then play the game. Hope y'all have a good weekend. Happy Sunday. You have a good one. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.